ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ಧಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 So in the last class, uh, we saw the meaning of these uh, Dhyana Shlokas in particular. These are all called uh, Guru Vandana. The our salutations, our remembrance and our uh, praise and our worship of our teacher, our Guru, our Guru Parampara in fact. And so, Shruti Smriti Puranana. This one we covered last time. so we will uh, uh recap that and i am not going to dictate anything to you because you have the notes with you and uh, shruti smriti purana nam alayam karunalayam namami bhagavat padam shankaram loka shankaram there is an alternate reading there namami bhagavat pada shankaram like that also it goes and uh, if it goes like that then you cannot stop at namami bhagavat pada Shankaram, Loka, Shankaram. Like that you can't say because Bhagavad Pada, Shankaram will become one word. So in this printout, you see them as two different words and therefore Bhagavad Pada, Shankaram. <clears throat> so I salute Sri Adi Shankaracharya, the abode of the Shruti, namely Vedas, Smriti, namely Gita and others and Puranas and a repository of compassion. the one who gives happiness to the world and one who is revered okay that's a meaning <clears throat> all right next shloka shankaram shankaracharyam keshavam badarayanam sutra bhashya krutav vande bhagavantau puna puna okay <clears throat> here we are worshiping veda vyasa and shankaracharya <clears throat> and we are saying that first word or the second word is shankaracharyam so shankaracharyam vande <clears throat> vande is the verb here in this shloka <clears throat> aham vande ekavachanam tama purushah i salute i worship and who do i worship shankaracharyam vande and who is shankaracharya shankaracharya is none other than shankara who is shiva so i look upon shankaracharya shiva so when i have to think of shiva i don't have to worry that shiva is not here or there etc <clears throat> no if i can think of shankaracharya then i have thought of shiva that's how it is <clears throat> and uh, so that shankaracharya who is none other than shiva shankara and uh, sham sham is the root there and uh, sham karoti ti shankara ha so those who are going to study the next level of sanskrit we we will see samasa and all will come so it's a it's a upapada purusha samasa like that you will see all that because there is a verb karoti and then there is a sha and then kara kri the dhatu both are combined therefore it's a, it's a type of peculiar type of samasa so shankara sham karoti means what one who bestows auspiciousness one who bestows kalyanam one who bestows mangalam whatever is good for you that that is your definition of kalyana and shastram will say the best kalyanam is moksha and therefore that one who bestows that is shankaram and uh, and who is shankaracharya who we know as the as the name shankaracharya whom we know as the acharya the first acharya in this parampara called shankaracharya and uh, that person i salute one day 
and then Keshavam Badaraya. <clears throat> I also salute Badarayana, who is Vyasa. <clears throat> it's another name for Vyasa. And so Badarayana. And who is Vyasa? Vyasa is Keshava. Keshava. Keshava is I look upon Vyasa as none other than Vishnu. None other than Vishnu. So if, if you think if oh if I have my puja room and I don't have uh, Vishnu picture, but I have a picture of Vyasa. Well, that's it. Vyasa's picture is Vishnu's picture. No need to look for another, <laughs> no need to get another picture. You are fine. So that's the way to <clears throat> look at these things. And uh, then look at that. Further, further. What did they do? You know, we have to, we are praising them. Okay. So they are not giving us a resume. We are putting a, we are, we have to look at their resume periodically every day. <laughs> Correct? <laughs> My God, look at all that they've given us like that. So what did they give us? Sutra Bhashya Kritav. These two people, these two, Shankaracharya and Vyasa, who are they? Kritav. They are, they have done something. What they have done? Sutra and Bhashya. That's all. These two words only are given. Look at that. <laughs> the word Sutra goes along with Vyasa and the word Bhashyam goes along with Shankara. That's it. Shortest resume you can find. Correct? Short one word resume. That's it. Okay. Two words you can say. Shankara, Shankara, Shiva is also there. And then, so Shiva is the initial. S, Shankaracharya. Shiva, Shankaracharya. And then what is his uh, initial? K, Badarayan. K, Badarayan. That's the word. And then what is my resume? Sutra is a resume of our uh, Vyasa and Bhashya is a resume of Shankar. But if he expands the word Bhashya, then we will need, uh, we, we, <laughs> this resume will become too big. And uh, so, this Sutram, Sutra. <clears throat> Very, various types of literature we have in our Shastra. Okay. So Shruti, Smriti, like that, we, say, we keep saying. And then among Smriti also, there is a one a particular type of text, Grantha, called Sutra, Sutra, Sutra Grantha. And which means those texts are all composed of, of this cryptic, highly cryptic. They look like phrases, can't even say sentences. But they are sentences and they, they're so cryptic, so it looks like phrase. Okay. Athato Brahma Jignasa Janma Jesya Jataha Shastra Yunitvat Tattu Saman Vayat. So, like this, he has written sutras. <clears throat> so, I don't want to go into details of what a sutra is, otherwise, the whole class will get over on that one word. So, Alpaksharam Masandigdham Saravat Vishwato Mukham. Astobham, astobham, anavadhyancha, sutram, sutra vidu, viduhu. So like that, this shloka tells us the meaning of the word sutra. So it's a very cryptic statement. Alpaksharam, asangdigdham, that which is, which has no ambiguity. Just because it is cryptic doesn't mean it can be ambiguous. No, absolutely no ambiguity. Saravat, it's, it has an essence. It is meaningful. Vishwatomukham. Vyasa has written 500 and plus 500 plus sutras in what is called Brahma Sutra. And uh, this Brahma Sutra is the pinnacle of the study of Vedanta. And uh, so 500 sutras. And it's, there's no way we can figure out the meaning of the sutras. Even I know all kinds of Sanskrit still can't figure out. And uh, that's so how cryptic it is. And so you have to extract the meaning out of this. It is like all this uh, uh, so there must be many seeds and all that from where they extract you know the powder and then from the powder they extract the decoction you know Ayurvedic preparations like this there are many things like that. So that's very very concentrated and uh, that is a sutra. So he's written a sutra and this Brahma Sutra it's, it's unlike any other text. It's not like Bhagavad Gita, it's not even like Upanishad. 
it analyzes the entire corpus of literature, all the Upanishads it analyzes. And then Vyasa's objective is to figure out what does the Upanishad say? Establish that. And, without, and then he will say, Tattu Saman Mayat. There is absolutely no contradiction between the Upanishads and they all say the same thing. Tattva Masi is a message of this. And Tattva Masi means what? That is the purpose of this 500 plus sutras. And uh, because of that, it's, it's an analytical text. Highly analytical. And because it's analytical, it is not taught in the beginning. It will be taught at the end. After one studies Bhagavad Gita, one studies Upanishads, and Shankara's Bhashyam and all covered, then slowly come into Brahma Sutra. And uh, so there is a particular way in which we start the study, and then that's that is that is there are a lot of reverence. We carry the the guru carries the Brahma Sutra book Krantha in his head, her head, and then does a, 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 a procession from the temple to the ashram, etc. It's a very elaborate ritual. Uh, because this person is able to study this means, uh, it's got to be the grace of Badarayana himself. Okay? So that is Sutra. We we'll leave it at that. And then Bhashyam. Bhashyam. So by now you are beginning to get a feel for <clears throat> the importance of Bhashyam. There is something called a Bhashyam. Ramanujacharya has also written a Bhashyam of uh, Bhagavad Gita. Adi Shankaracharya has written, of course. And so, some shlokas elaborate, very elaborate Bhashyam. Some shlokas very cryptic. Like, for example, Kaschen nobaya vidrashtaha chenna brahmiva nashyati apratishto mahabaho kam gatin krishna gachati. Correct? Able to recall this? Yeah, Kam Gatim Krishna Gatsit. What happens to this guy who's 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 been he was a Shraddha who studied the Shasram, but then he passed away? Well, not to worry, he's going to say. So there in that Krishna's Arjuna's question, there is <clears throat> nothing much to analyze. And so Shankara won't say much at all. Just maybe translate a word or something in his own words and then leave it at that. And other shlokas like karman nyakarma yaf pashyet akarmani cha karma yaha sabudhiman manushyeshu sakritsna sakar sakritsna karma krita sayukta kritsna karma krita long long bash and uh, because of the that it's, 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 the shloka is dense you know dense so <laughs> dense means what <laughs> Our, our Swami used to say that uh, I've told you this, I, I don't mind repeating it. So, Vyasa was dictating Mahabharata to Ganesha. Ganesha became the, you know, he's, he's a, he became the typist. And, uh, and Ganesha gave a condition. What is the condition? Uh, I can, I'm a very good scribe. I am very good. You know that I'm good. Okay. But I'm, I'll come only with a condition. Condition is you should not stop dictating. If you stop dictating, then I will get an away from it. That's the condition. Are you ready for it? Yes, I said, okay. All right. And I am ready for it. And so, kept on dictating and then the Bhagavad Gita came. And then, uh, that's I wanted to take a break. You know, because this body, you know, constantly sitting. Yesterday, yesterday we had a meeting. I had a meeting with our Sasyam class students, Sanskrit class students. So there were about 25, 30 people in the, in the class, in the session. Uh, and uh, because they had written the exams and all, and so the class is over. I wanted to meet all the students. And so 8 o'clock in the evening, it started. 11.30, we ended up. <laughs> I think all, some of you were there. And uh, so three and a half hours, and I tried to get up, but I could not get up. <laughs> so that's how it is. So Vyasa, poor Vyasa, he also has a body, etc. So uh, then he says, I, Vyasa put a condition. He says, okay, before you write, you have to understand the shloka completely. Completely means not Aragora, not Thoda Thoda and all that. Okay, karma, etc. No, no. 
all the various ways of interpretation you must interpret and understand so our swami used to say traditionally they say this he say then vasa wanted to take a break he will give a shloka like this karmanya karma yah pashyet akarmani cha karma yah and then then he took a break because yes uh, i know it will take some time for ganesha to figure it out <laughs> like that so uh, so bhashya so shankara writes a bhashya like that and of course bhashya for bhagavad gita upanishads vishnu sahasra namam like this many many texts he has written a bhashya for okay so tau sutra bhashya krito vande bhagavanto they are bhagavantah they are they are bhagavan both of them are equal to bhagavan for me and tau bhagavanto punah punah vande tau so karmani so that is dvitiya vibhakti dvivachanam okay sanskrit students right puna so bhagavan bhagavanto bhagavantah bhagavanto ama bhagavantam bhagavanto bhagavatah so that's how it works there okay translation i salute again and again i am not dictating you can look it up okay i salute again and again the great teacher adi shankaracharya who is lord shiva and badarayana who is lord vishnu comma the venerable ones who wrote the bhashyas and the brahma sutras respectively okay third shloka ishvaro guru ratmeti murti bedha vibhagine vyomavat vyapta dehaya dakshinamurtaye namah see i had explained these things once before but now I, my explanation is a little different right because now it's been one year since i explained all this now you know a lot more you I, and so since you know bhashyam i am giving a little extra you know sutram etc but the initial person who is just getting familiar with the shastram you know there are a lot of things i won't, wouldn't have said that okay okay <clears throat> ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ಓಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ದಿಸ್ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ಇಸ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶಿವ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶಿವ ವೆನ್ ಶಿವ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ರೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ ವೆನ್ ಶಿವ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಾಲ್ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ and uh, why because dakshinaha means samarthaha samarthaha one who is capable of one who has the capacity and what kind of capacity capacity to unfold unfold the satyam and what is the satyam amurtihi and daksh dakshinascha amurtischa dakshina murtihi and that satyam is as satyam and it is it is uh, formless it is sarvagataha it is ajaha it is avinashi etc that amurti he and that, that person is samartha to explain what is amurti he and he himself is amurti he even though i have murti of dakshina murti in front of me still the real form of dakshina murti is no form at all formless and so that dakshina murti hi another meaning for dakshina murti is dakshina ha south south the direction of south correct so dakshina bhimuka murti hi one who is facing south dakshina murti is facing south and because the south in our tradition so the southern direction northern direction two among these directions you know because our temples and our way of worship and our way of doing namaskara our way of sleeping also they the people worry a lot about directions inga thala vechikada therikile vechikada inga merkile vechikada ne edha enga polana edha solide irpa they will keep out telling one household they will say don't put the head there another household they will say something different and you have to you have to keep your mouth shut basically even though you you, you have your own thing and you go somewhere else you just follow whatever they say okay and uh, so this direction is very important for us and uh, we may not know any shlokas and this and that but all these these basics we have to know this is direction and so on that kalaku meke east west they'll ask kalaku enga irukke appadina so come to a new place which is east 
Uh, that is correct. So like that they will say. And uh, so south, the direction of south and north. So north is, is the direction, everybody wants to go north. North is the direction that attracts. North is the direction, you know, and business is going north. Business is going south. Economy is going north. Economy is going south, they say, right? So same thing. South is the direction nobody wants to go. And therefore, south is the, considered the direction of death. North is the direction of moksha. Moksha. Amrityuhu. Okay. So, therefore, so where the Dakshina, this, the Dakshinamurti is facing south. So that when I look at Dakshinamurti, I am facing north. So that's the basic idea there. And so even in temples, often you will find that Dakshinamurti, that Murti is facing south. And uh, that is the other meaning for Dakshinamurti. What is the first meaning? The, the, the Samarthaha, the one who is skilled, fully has a complete capacity to unfold the Shastram and uh, who is formless as well. Okay? That is the one meaning of Dakshinamurti. Okay, so we saw two meanings. So Namaha, Dakshinamurti Namaha. My salutations to Dakshinamurti. And who is he? Ishwaraha. He is Ishwara. And then Guruhu, Ishwaraha. So how do you split this? Ishwaraha, Guruhu, Atma, Iti. Okay, the second word is actually three words sticking to each other, correct? So, Ishwaraha, Guru, Atma, Iti. Iti means within quotes. Murti Bheda Vibhag. So, Murti Bheda Vibhag. So, this Dakshina Murti. <clears throat> appears divided. Appears divided. Divided as what? As Ishwaraha, Bhagavan. And then as Guru and as Atma also appears. It means what? All, all are identical. Ishwara, Guru is Ishwara. And that Guru is not separate from Atma. It means not separate from me. Atma is Ishwara, Jiveshwara, Ikyam. Because that is the, that is the Mahavakyam. And Guru, of course, is the embodiment of this teaching. And then Guru becomes equal to Ishwara for us. And therefore, when I worship Guru, it's equivalent to worshipping Bhagavan, Ishvara. Guru Dhyanam is Ishvara Dhyan. So I don't have to go anywhere to look for Bhagavan. Once a Guru is there, then that is, that is it. Everything is there. And so, what is that? Guru Gobind Do Khade Kake Lago Pai Balihari Guru Apne Govind Dio Batai. So like this, there is a Doha. Uh, Kabir Das Doha, I think. And uh, so the question is asked Guru Govind Do Khade. Hey, Vishnu, Govinda, and Guru both are standing in front of me. Who do I do namaskar first? Who do I say namaste? Who do, who do I look at first? Because if I'm looking at uh, one person, I'm not looking at this person. I'm looking at this person, I'm not looking at this person. So what? what I'm now in, I have a dilemma now. What do I do? So it says, uh, Balihari Guru Apne Govind Deyo Mila. Hey, I didn't know who Govinda was. It was my Guru who showed me what who Govinda is. Who is Govinda? Govinda. So, Go in Sanskrit means many words, many meanings. And one of the meanings is uh, Vedas. Vedas. And Vind. Vind means to get, to obtain. Okay. And uh, through the Vedas, what do I obtain? What do I gain? I understand Ishwara. I understand Ishwara. And therefore, that Ishwara is called Govinda. That which I gain through the Shastram, through the Vedas, that which I appreciate, understand completely through the Vedas as Ishwara, and as Ishwara who is none other than me, Atma, Jivatma, that is Govinda. Correct? So that's, that's the meaning there. And so, that Guru <clears throat> uh, is no different than Ishwara for me. And of course, no different than Atma also. And uh, so Dakshinamurti appears divided as Ishwara, Guru and Atma. 
and then further vyoma vat vyapta dehaya so what is the form of this dakshana murti well form is all pervasive vyapta deha and uh, two words here vyoma vat vyapta dehaya two words are there okay so in fact um, vyoma vat yeah maybe we should not take it as two words yeah two words correct vyoma vat vyapta deha so like vyoma vyoma vat means like vyoma vyoma means space akashah akashavat vyapta dehaya so formless all pervasive therefore that if you want to visualize the body of dakshinamurti the form of dakshinamurti well you visualize the entire universe that is dakshinamurti correct so tasmai dakshinamurti ye namaha salutation to bhagavan dakshinamurti who is all pervasive like space but who appears as though divided as ishvara guru hu and atma okay and the self name okay so there is another shloka which we don't normally chant in the in the in the morning and in the classes and kukarastu uh, andhakaro vai rukarastan nivartakaha andhakar niroditva guru ritya vidhiyate so the word guru is explained in this shloka guru iti abhidhiyate it's so called the guru is called in this way and in what way is being said here okay gukaraha andhakaraha vai and he is basically splitting the two syllables of the word guru and he is saying there are two syllables gu and ru in the word guru that's that's clear and then gukaraha so in sanskrit we refer to letters in this manner so like uh, a a e e u u that's that's how commonly we that's a way to pronounce these letters then when you refer to a particular letter we don't say a we will say akaraha you did not pronounce akaraha you did not pronounce there is a ukara there we did notice ukara like that we will say correct ukara it means u so it helps us uh, uh, it helps us uh, uh, draw everybody's attention to the letter otherwise the that u if you simply say u we may miss it out in the conversation and therefore ukaraha the karaha is is a suffix added to any letter to refer to that letter okay so gukaraha first word is gukaraha second word is tu third word is andhakaraha three words sticking to each other there okay gukaraha tu andhakaraha so gukara refers to darkness okay and then rukaraha rukaraha tan nivartakaha okay tan nivart two words there so rukara the syllable ru or the letter ru is the nivartaka is the remover of tan tad so what is of that of that means what of that of andhakara of that darkness uh, remover of that darkness is the letter ru and then andhakara niroditvat guru ritya vidhi just like light removes darkness completely so also this person this person removes the darkness of ignorance ignorance is compared compared to darkness in the first one and so gukaraha tu andhakaro vai and so so also uh, i mean the word ajnanam is not used here and andhakara is darkness and so that we have to put it in brackets darkness of ignorance and uh, <clears throat> andhakara nirodhitva because the guru removes that darkness of ignorance the person is called as a guru that is the meaning of this shloka 
So fairly straightforward. The syllable gu stands for darkness within brackets of ignorance and ru represents its remover, full stop. A guru is so called because uh, he or she removes the darkness of ignorance. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Sadashiva samarambham shankaracharya madhyamam asmadacharya parvirtam vande guru paramparam. So now, after saluting our Guru and then uh, Shankaracharya, Veda Vyasa, etc., the entire Guru Parampara is saluted. <clears throat> parampara is needed. There are two kinds of knowledge. What are the two kinds? Vevidya Veditavya Parachai Vaparacha. Okay. Paravidya and Aparavidya. Aparavidya is all the objective sciences, objective knowledge. It's science of anything that you objectify, which means the entire universe and every all the sciences which have now names called geology, psychology, this and that, botany, zoology, mathematics, information technology, whatever it is, everything is a science. And the science or it is a knowledge of something that you can objectify. That is not you, in other words. Anatma Vidya. Anatma Vidya is this Apara Vidya. And there is something called the self. And Atma. Atma, who am I? Somebody asks, who am I? Then, generally, you, you can't get this in a university. I want to study about myself. Well, I want to study about myself means we have to go to a guru and ask him, who am I, him or her? And then only this Brahma Vidya, Atma Vidya comes. And so, why Parampara is needed? If you say, why Guru is needed? Well, I need a guru for everything. For even to learn languages, I need a teacher. No doubt about that. Without a teacher, it's difficult to learn. But it's also possible to learn without a teacher. Number one. Okay. It's an objective science. It's something that you can objectify. And so with this, it is, which it is within the realm of what you can figure out by cause and effect. You can watch somebody, you can learn it. It's a skill you can learn by watching somebody, etc. And uh, there is no need for a parampara there. Because you can learn by yourself also. Parampara is not needed. But then here, Mahavakya, Mahavakya Upadesha Karta Guru, one who unfolds the meaning of the Mahavakya. It is impossible for any human being to figure out that essentially I am equal to Ishvara. Impossible. Impossible with an uppercase I. There's not you can't even dream. Oh, I accidentally thought, what is this? Is it possible that I am Bhagavan? Is there a chance? There's absolutely no chance. And so, because I'm still trying to figure out people are mostly using words like idiot and all that when they call me. And so there's no chance. Bhagavan, <laughs> I'm trying to just seek the approval of people around me and trying to lead a simple life here. And this idea that I am Bhagavan idea is not going to come. Even in dream, it's not going to come. That is why a guru is me. Needed to talk about it and unfold the meaning of that Mahavakyam. And therefore, this Guru Paramparam Vande, Aham Vande, Aham Guru Param, Paramparam Vande. I salute this Guru Parampara. And if I need a Guru, the Guru also needed a Guru. He needed a Guru. And then she needed a Guru. And she, uh, he needed a Guru. So that, that is a Guru Parampara. And that Guru Parampara is explained in this shloka. How will that parampara look like? And it, look, it will look like this, he says. And Sada Shiva Samarambham. Correct? Who is the first guru? Somebody asks. Well, the minute you point to a person, then that person also needed a guru. The person uh, also is, is worshipping guru. And uh, Namaha, Akshamurti, Namaha, like that he says. Therefore, here, Sadashiva Samarambha. If at all you can say the beginning, and that beginning has to be Sadashiva Parameshwara. And uh, 
so sadashiva samarambham that we, parampara which started with sadashiva okay shankaracharya madhyamam asmad acharya paryanta it started with with sadashiva and it went all the way down to my teacher asmad acharya paryanta so the parampara which went all the way down to my teacher and then in between shankaracharya madhyam because of shankara's role in this whole teaching of advaita vedanta and uh, which now you are now exposed to you know bhashyam etc and what what role bhashyam plays in understanding the smriti grantha of bhagavad gita Shankaracharya has written various, various other texts also called Prakarana Grantha. So, so one shloka, one, so he's written on various devatas. And one of the shlokas is Dakshinamurti Ashtakam. So he's written eight, eight shlokas on Dakshinamurti. And it's called Dakshinamurti Stotra, popularly called. So there is Vishwam Darpana Dashyamana Nagari. tulyam nijantargatam etc and it's uh, it's uh, pretty cryptic and uh, very profound it takes it takes a while to understand split this his shloka and understand and so sureshwar acharya one of his students writes a vartika a commentary on dakshinamurti stotra it's called Ma- manasolas that is the name of the text it's called manasolas and that itself has 40 shlokas okay and then ramathirtha wrote a commentary on sureshwara acharya's manasolasa and that also keeps on going on uh, and as though this is not enough somebody called swayam prakashayati wrote a commentary on that on chakra acharya's dakshinamurti stotram independent work and uh, and that is called tattva sudha and so this is how it works <laughs> and uh, it goes on and on and on and so shankaracharya sir presence is felt and that's the uh, that's why shankaracharya madhyama he is the link he is the link for us to bhagwan shiva he is the link and so one day tam guru paramparam aham bande i salute the lineage of teachers beginning with the ever auspicious bhagavan shiva uh, linked by adi shankaracharya in the middle and extending up to my own teacher <clears throat> so that completes this uh, series of shlokas called uh, guru vandanam and uh, now let's look at this uh, i'm now looking at yeah i'm looking at page number 36 so that is uh, swasti pradabhya okay the concluding swasti shloka so everybody has this right i'm assuming all of you have this document yeah okay Yes, you know, an email received, and then everybody is busy, and it was sent some time ago, probably a month ago, and a month and a half. And I'll I'll save the file later. And later means what? Now we have to search for it. Suddenly it was, uh, you know, only it's half an hour ago only I sent a message, and so now we have to go search for it. And search for it means how will you search for it? Oh, Vijay ji sent the message. So good, good, Vijay. And then uh, some yeah. a lot of work to do, you know. <coughs> so swasti praja bhya paripale these are all prayers for the benefit of humanity so general prayers of well being okay and uh, <clears throat> prayers that acknowledge acknowledge that i am not i i am an individual and i i have kartrutvam I, i i have to do things but things the results are not in my hands and therefore 
I have to acknowledge and I do acknowledge and I acknowledge the presence of Ishwara and and I pray for everybody else in the same manner also. And uh, so let's see what it is. Swasti Prajabhyaha Paripala Yanta. <clears throat> Yeah. Swasti Prajabhyaha. Full stop. Sentence stops right there. Swasti Prajabhyaha. Prajabhyaha Swasti. Prajabhyaha Mangalam. For the people, may there be auspiciousness. Sham. Mangalam. Swasti. Okay. Swasti is a very, uh, very unique word and it means that uh, auspiciousness, Mangalam, happiness. Okay. May, may there be happiness for all people. Full stop. Okay. Paripalayantam nyayena margena mahi mahishaha. Mahishaha. Okay. Mahishaha. The, the people who are, who are leading this world, governing various countries, the prime ministers and the presidents and other leaders, you know, under them. And uh, they are called Mahishaha. Okay. Those days they will say kings and rulers, etc. But here in the current context, we have to say, the world's leaders. Okay. So what, what about these leaders? Mahishaha Mahim Nyayena Margena Paripalayanta. Paripalayanta. Palayanta. Govern. Paripalayanta. Paritaha Palayanta. Govern properly, completely, holistically. Not only do I do it well, but I should, I should be, have be a visionary. I should understand all aspects. Simply going on constructing, constructing, constructing like in China. But then environment is gone. Gone. So it can't be like that. Paripalayantam. I must understand the ramifications of all the actions of people and the actions of other countries also. What they are doing also impacts us. What I am doing impacts them. What happens in in Haryana, you, you know, you burn all these things and then it impacts Delhi. So Delhi is worried about it. Many Delhiites don't know that there is something called agriculture. But then they know food is coming. So the farmers are important. So yeah, the connection is there. So yeah, they are trying to figure out what is the best way to sort out this Delhi pollution problem. Right? So like this, like this, all interconnected. So Mahishaha, let them protect the countries. Let them govern the Mahim. Mahi is... Mahi is earth, actually speaking. Mahi is earth. Okay. And uh, let them govern the people of this planet. Okay. How? Nyayena Marge. Righteously, let them govern. And then go Brahmane Bhyaha Shubhamastu Nityam. Shubhamastu. May there be Mangalam, prosperity and uh, well-being. For two kinds of things. Go Brahmane Bhyaha. Interesting choice of words. Go for the cow. For the cow, let the cow be prosperous. And because if a cow can be free of fear, a uh, cow is a harmless animal, so they have chosen the cow. Very interesting. So if the cow is happy in a country, then that means if a, that means then people, all animals also likely they are they can roam freely. That's the idea. They can be free. <clears throat> And then Brahmane Bhyaha, Brahmanaha, Brahma Janati ki Brahmanaha. One who pursues the study of Brahma is a Brahmanaha. So that person has nothing else to do but to study the Shastram. Therefore, that person is a non competitor. I am threatened by another person who competes. Competition means threat, threat means fear. And uh, a person, a Brahmana cannot be a threat to anybody. Brahmana can only be a blessing to others. And therefore, that Brahmana has to be protected. And if a Brahmanas are safe in a society, that means the society is, is, is a good place to be in. Okay. And uh, so, go Brahmane Bhyaha Shubham Astu Nityam. Nityam Shubham Astu. Let this, this uh, cows and uh, or animals and Brahmanas teachers, let them be, let them, Shubham, let them be happy. 
ಓಕೆ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ದಂ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ದೆನ್ ಲೋಕ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಸುಖಿನೋ ಲೋಕ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಸುಖಿನಂತ ಸುಖಿನ ಅಗೇನ್ ಲೆಟ್ ದನ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಹೂ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಲೋಕ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡೆಡ್ ಲೆಟ್ ದನ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಸೊ ಮೇ ದೇರ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಫುಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಮೇ ದ ರೂಲರ್ಸ್ ರೈಚಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ರೂಲ್ ದ ಅರ್ತ್ ಫುಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಮೇ ದೇರ್ ಬಿ ವೆಲ್ಫೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕೌಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆನ್ ಆರ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಫುಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಓಕೆ ವೆರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾಲೇ ಪರ್ಜನ್ಯ ವರ್ಷತು ವರ್ಷತು ಮೇ ಟ್ರೇನ್ ಮೇ ಟ್ರೇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೇ ವಾಟ್ ರೈನ್ ಪರ್ಜನ್ಯ ಪರ್ಜನ್ಯ ವರ್ಷತು ಮೇ ದ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ ರೈನ್ ಓಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೌ ದೇ ಶುಡ್ ರೈನ್ ಕಾಲೇ ಅಟ್ ದ ಅಪ್ರೋಪ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಪೃಥ್ವಿ ಸಸ್ಯಶಾಲಿನಿ ಪೃಥ್ವಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೋಲಾರ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ let it be sasyam see the sasyam or we have named our sanskrit class as sasyam that word sasya is right there sasya shalini let it be bountiful full of plants trees let there be greenery on this earth and uh, why should there be greenery well first of all food comes only from this green plants secondly we also need plants for for our oxygen and they consume the carbon dioxide that we we generate and so definitely we need uh, that we need that vegetation okay and so what about next one desho ayam kshobarahitaha ayam deshaha kshobarahitaha with the brackets bhavatu astu ayam deshaha this country this country wherever we are this country kshobarahitaha bhavatu kshoba kshoba means um shortage shoba famine and so shortage of our shortage of anything so shoba rahitaha free from shoba may this country be free from shortage free from famine etc so shortage of food etc is a problem and uh, sri lanka has been in news recently i don't know if you are watching that and so problem some problem here and there so very hard to see people the the price is going up and all that astronomical astronomical rates etc not good to see that so let those kinds of problems not be there anywhere <clears throat> brahmanaha santu nirbhayaha so same idea as we talked about before and uh, may the clouds rain at the proper time may the earth produce grains may this country be free from famine may people of wisdom be fearless fearless what a prayer is it not may people of wisdom be fearless if the people the wise people are fearless that means everybody is fearless at that if cows are fearless then cows are safe then all animals are safe. anyway then uh, ಸರ್ವೇ ಭವಂತು ಸುಖಿನ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಅಂಡ್ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸಂತು ನಿರಾಮಯ ಸರ್ವೇ ಭದ್ರಾಣಿ ಪಶ್ಯಂತು ಮಾ ಕಚಿತ್ ದುಃಖ ಭಾಗ ಭವೇತ್ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸುಖಿನ ಭವಂತು ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಸರ್ವೇ ನಿರಾಮಯ ಭವಂತು ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಬಿ ಆಮಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಆಮಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಧಿ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನಿರಾಮಯ so free from disease nirvyadhi so sarve let everybody be free from disease and sarve badrani pashyantu may everybody experience joy may all good things happen to people that way badrani badram same as sham badram karne vishrunu yama devaha badram pashye marcha vidya jatra so like that we have a mantra so that bhadram kalyanam mangalam makas chit dukha bhag bhave dukha bhag dukha bhag dukha bhag means let dukha sorrow not come to anybody 
that is the basic idea may everybody be happy may dukha not come because we have to you know yoga kshema yoga kshemam vahamyam right so we have to we need we need good things and we also you know the hair is there i want hair on my head that is number 1 then i don't want gray hair so i have to keep the grayness away you know and so for gray and keeping grayness away there is a big industry and if the hair becomes gray then there is an industry that is active actively working that also grayness also i don't have and i want hair also so both are there so so therefore joy and sorrow let joy come let sorrow not come <clears throat> okay so translating this may all be happy full stop may all be free from disease full stop may all enjoy prosperity full stop may none experience sorrow full stop that last shloka asato ma sadgamaya gamaya is the verb here okay gamaya gamaya may may you lead me that is the idea so nich so sanskrit students so gacha and then gamaya gamaya is, is nich pratyaya is there okay so anyway gamaya means lead me okay and then asato ma sad gamaya very cryptic again here so literal translation will be may you lead me uh, from the unreal to the real that's the way they translate it okay and real to the real so now now that we have studied vedanta and so we know so sataha from mithya may you i see everything as mithya I, I, everything is mithya i don't know that i take everything as satyam so may i see the satyam in all this mithya may i see the truth of this world may i see the truth of myself also okay i take the body as satyam asat no body is asat mithya and uh, let me see that so take me from mithya to satyam okay help me understand that okay tamaso ma jyotir gamaya so gamaya again same verb is that lead me lead me from tamas to jyoti from darkness to light brightness okay again same concept because the darkness of ignorance is there and so may you remove that ignorance that seems to be natural to everybody and so it's a prayer for every that everybody can chant tamaso ma jyotir gamaya and uh, because that knowledge is needed for me to go from asat to sat tamas has to go away and so both are connected here and nityor ma amritam gamaya take me from death to immortality that's the way it is translated so take me body is death it's not like i will suddenly become immortal not possible none body becomes immortal no body will not be immortal body is mortal and uh, then how can i become immortal well i can become immortal if only if i am already immortal pratasya prapti hi immortality is not suddenly new thing that is going to come to me atma is immortal atma is ajaha atma is avinashi atma is sarvagataha i must understand that that is the meaning of taking mrityorma amritam gamaya take me from death to immortality okay nice prayers even if we don't understand vedanta it's a nice prayer correct very nice it is <clears throat> om shanti 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 hi so tapatrayam is there <clears throat> three kinds of sorrow three kinds of obstacles in my life three kinds of things that stop me from getting that sham that mangalam which which was asked about asked for earlier what is that so uh, adhyatmika tapam okay let's start with this so one is the adi daivika tap so all the factors over which i don't have any control so rain and storms and uh, cyclones and tornadoes and volcanoes all these things are there which just cause havoc destruction landslides and all that no control at all we have no control so adi daivika tapam bhagavan it's just nature that's how it is 
and so adi devika tapam is there and for that one shanti may you protect me from all these things that i have no control over and then second shanti adi bhautika tap so things that are happening in the in my in my surroundings over which i have some control some control is there so adi bhautika tap so like things that you know things that i can i can have a say over those things so start doing it now let's do it later or uh, or some problem is there i can i can make a phone call i can talk to the landlord i can talk to the contractor i can talk to my boss problem is there i can talk to my boss and say these are the problems i'm facing can you help me with that yeah so there is things where i have some control uh is is a, is is the problems where i have some control over uh, the manifestation of the problems is called adi bhautika tapam and so one shanti is needed for neutralizing that tapaha tapaha means sorrow a difficulty a problem and so that is the one shanti then the last shanti is for adhyatmika tapam adhyatmika tapam or adhyatmika tapam and so problems that are emanating from my own body and mind and so disease pain all these things are there so physical and mental problems physical and mental challenges okay and that means even simply paying attention we can have a problem focusing on something we have a pro- we might have a problem or just paying more attention to my children my parents yeah, i i need to spend some time so i i am not able to spend enough time with my children if i say well shanti hi pray for it om shanti 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 hi. let me enjoy the freedom to spend the right time at the right place okay very important and so three shantis are there to counter to neutralize the three tapas called tapatrayam om shanti 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 hi. so lead me from the unreal to the real within brackets by giving knowledge full stop from darkness of ignorance to light of knowledge from death sense of limitation to immortality limitlessness liberation full stop om shanti 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 so we'll stop with that om pur damada pur namidam pur nat pur namudachyate pur nasya pur namadaya pur nameva vashishyate om shanti 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 hari hi om shri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om